The people spoke very clearly on Election Day. Border security is a top priority for the people of uh, Texas and the people of the United States. And Donald Trump has made a promise for a mass deportation effort. Uh, focusing on criminals, you know, who, who come here illegally and then commit even more crimes first. Uh, but Joe Biden, or rather Donald Trump's campaign on the promise that he will implement this nationwide mass deportation effort after the Biden-Harris administration out, allowed at least 10, 12, 15 million into our country illegally. And joining us on the live news line, uh, Congressman Chip Roy from uh, the Hill Country. Uh, Chip Roy, good morning. Thank you for joining us today on the Todd and Oz Show. Um, Great. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit how this would work. You guys. Yeah, absolutely. I know there's a little bit of a beef or dis a disagreement on the Republican side about how this can be implemented. What are your thoughts? I mean, the people have spoken. Well, it goes without saying that Republicans ran very clearly on the issue of border security and that the American people were fed up with what's been happening to our country. So that's the starting place, right? There, mm -hmm. There is a mandate. And it is very clear that that mandate is to secure the border, stop the flow. Uh, that's uh, we got to say that's point number one, and it needs to be permanent changes, not just patchwork changes. Don't just stop the flow for now, so that in four years or eight years or twelve years, another administration can do what Biden and Harris and Mayorkas did, ignoring and violating our laws to release people into the United States. But we also have to clean up the mess, mm. and we need to be aggressive in doing it. And it won't be easy, but you just start doing the hard work of finding people who were released into this country or came in and never even checked in, the gotaways, and you start removing them. And we shouldn't be in the business of uh, trying to walk that back. Some of my colleagues are trying to say, well, we'll remove just the criminals, but everybody else will have to, you know, kind of move on. No, mm -hmm. we need to make very clear that if you were released into the United States unlawfully, illegitimately by the Biden administration, um, and you're, you're illegitimately present, that you are on notice that you will be removed. And um, I'm fine with prioritizing criminals and the one million people who already have a removal order. I'm fine with prioritizing the people who are gotaways, who are just running around with no court dates. But those who are illegitimately given court dates and dumped in the United States, they've got to be dealt with as well to send a message to the world. It's unfair to the people who have waited in line. It's unfair to the people who have followed the rules. And it, it makes it difficult for us to go through and identify who should be removed and who shouldn't. If you were illegitimately released in the United States, you're on notice, you know, you need to be removed. The critics are, are, are questioning how will we pay for this, this mass deportation effort. My thought is, well, we can get the money the same place that the left got the money to fly them here and the money to house them and feed them and clothe them. We could use the very same dollars to reverse the action. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, well, first of all, yes, we have to do our job. Um, second of all, we just gotta, you know, if we need the funding, go find the funding. But, but here's the important part. We can also tax remittances, the fees that those people who come here send back to, you know, uh, Mexico heavily, but also the rest of the world, tax those remittances when they're sending money back. Also, we can charge fees to the parolees. Mm. You are paroled into the United States. You were given a date to appear. I believe that was unlawful and illegitimate by the Biden administration. But as long as they're here, until we remove them, uh, make them pay fees to pay for all this processing. Uh, because, you know, we'll go through a whole effort, right? You're a criminal, deported. You already have an order, deported. You don't have any paperwork at all. You weren't given a notice to appear, deported. You're out. Okay, you show up and you've got a notice to appear in court. The Biden administration gave it to you. I believe that was illegitimate, but we're going to have to look at it, right? Because these are human beings and we got to figure out, okay, why are you here? What did they say? That'll cost money. They should have to pay fees for that. Okay, so I think we can fund it. I think we can raise revenue with it. I think people will self-deport. I think we can get rid of all the bad actors and then we can figure out and process all the people that were released, but make them pay for it. That's the simple answer. Governor Greg Abbott is installing more border buoys. And uh, Don Buckingham, our Texas land commissioner, I know has sent a letter to the government offering uh, to lease about 1,400 acres to create, I guess, some sort of uh, uh, deportation facility. Uh, are you aware of this? What, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I saw those reports, and I hadn't talked to Don, but but um, but I saw the the, uh, the the press on that, and I'm like, I'm all for it. I mean, whatever Texas can do 
to work with, coordinate with, facilitate the actions of the Trump administration to, to remove people and send a message to the world that not only are you not coming here anymore, not only are the cartels going to stop you know, abusing our laws and running fentanyl in and killing Americans and running people uh, in here and into the sex trafficking trade and little girls getting abused, all that's going to end, but we're going to be deporting people. That would be the best message we could send to the world and the best message to rebuild the Western Hemisphere. We need to get busy exporting freedom and the rule of law and get the Western Hemisphere cleaned up so we can push back on China. we got to stop allowing this massive flow and abuse for our border. It's bad for us. It's bad for migrants. It's bad for the rest of the countries in the Western Hemisphere. It empowers China. It empowers cartels. We need to reverse it. So good for Texas, good for Don. Let's work with the feds. Uh, we, Texas, let's work with the feds to get it right. Uh, Congressman, I, I know you've pinned a letter to, to Javier Becerra, Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, requesting that all records be preserved of, of the hundreds of thousands of, of missing, unaccompanied children that have come yeah. on, over the border. How likely do you think we'll see that request honored? And moving forward into a new era, new administration, what can we do to prevent these children from falling into the hands of these nefarious traffickers like we've seen? Well, this is one of the great, um, you know, tragedies of the abuse of the law by the Biden heirs, my workers regime. Um, we've got 300 and something thousand kids that we don't know where they are. Now, I, I believe in the truth and talking about the truth and seeking truth. That doesn't mean that all 300 thousand kids are missing or not with families. What it means is we don't know. It means that there are probably tens of thousands of them who aren't with families, aren't with loved ones, are abused, are in labor camps. We know this because we find them. Mm. So there are many. And that's unacceptable. Remember all the kids in cages. Remember all the wailing and gnashing of teeth, yeah. which was mostly put on. It was, it was being done for effect. AOC was down there in a white pantsuit. Now the media doesn't want to focus on the fact that literally we've had 300 and something thousand. It's actually 400,000 when you look at the total numbers. That we're not sure. So, yeah, I sent a letter for a preservation request. Hold your data, hold your records. One, so we can find the kids. Two, so we can know how they did this. Like, how can you allow this to happen? And three, how can we prevent it in the future? And you prevent it in the future by having a secure border with laws that are followed. We need to make permanent changes. Yes, we need to build the wall, but we need permanent law changes so that the laws can't be abused in the future. Who do we point the finger at on these missing children? I know it's at the top, you know, HHS and uh, Mayorkas, but who, who are the people that um, had a very poor process of vetting these children? These are children, right? I mean, who's responsible? I mean, if Texas CPS loses a child, somebody's going to get fired and, and maybe even a criminal case. It sounds like there's potential crimes committed uh, in the vetting process. Well, this, this is what we want to get to the bottom of, right? right One right. is why we need a Department of Justice that is, uh, you know, actually focusing on the right things instead of putting grandmothers in jail for exercising their yeah. free speech rights and their religious liberty rights to protest abortion clinics. Um, and, you know, we need to get to the bottom of this so the American people understand what actually happened here. And again, I expect that we will find that large numbers of those 300,000 are in fact with families or loved ones, but we will also find that tens of thousands of them are not. Mm. So we need to figure out who's to blame. Uh, we need to hold them accountable, uh, criminal charges where it's appropriate. Um, and I think, uh, the, I think that's part of the preservation record request so we can identify, how did you do this? Mm. How did this happen? And the answer really is, I mean, look, there's a reason we impeached Alejandro Mayorkas. He has been violating the laws. First cabinet secretary to be impeached, I think, in, I don't know, 100 years. And he was deserved to be impeached. But now we need to uh, potentially look into criminal charges on any of the actors who did this stuff knowingly. Remember, he lied hmm. about the whipping of the Haitians by the Border Patrol agents. We know he lied about uh, whether or not and how they were violating the laws. He lied to me under oath uh, in the uh, Judiciary Committee. Um, so we need to seek truth wherever it may lead. And if these folks were violating the law and they knew it and people died as a result, then there need to be consequences. So we're going to have to look at all of this. Absolutely. Congressman Chip Roy on the live news line. Thank you so much for checking in this morning on the Todd and Oz show. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thanks guys. God bless. It is uh, 745 here at KLBJ. The Todd and Oz show.
This segment brought to you by Roger Beasley Mazda. Why pay new car prices when you can drive like new with warranty 